Hey everyone, I'm back again today with guitars. Uh, this is the first in this series you're seeing. Uh, basically, we had a great reaction to our I Can See Clearly Now video, and I've been putting together a series of videos to show uh, how we put the song together. So I've done vocals so far and bass, and today I'm doing guitars. So if that's something you're interested in, hang around. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to say again, uh, thank you all so much for listening to the song and watching the video and being so supportive. We really appreciate it. Let's jump into Reaper and check out how the guitars are put together. Okay, guitars. Uh, we're going to get right into this. But before that, you know what time it is. There's some stuff to my left, right over there. If you could do some or all of that for me, uh, I'd appreciate it. The guys in the band would appreciate it. And uh, thanks in advance. So let's get into this. If we look at my arrange view here, I actually need to solo this real quick. Okay, so you'll see I have these green items and these blue items uh the channels are those same colors i've got these green channels here and these blue channels here and um these ones up top are the main guitar bed and then i've got some unison parts here and um these are all octave parts and then and when we get to this part of the song, this is the instrumental section. And that is even another set of unison guitars um, that is all blended in. And if I bring up the mixer, you can see we have these corresponding channels. I've got these two are on A2 and A3 here. And then these uh, unison parts are on this OCT1 and OCT2 and then they're hidden by the mixer but these these blue ones are here on B1 and B2 so that's how that's all laid out as usual tall channels are buses the short channels are playback returns um, this channel is not being used currently um, I probably actually use that as a DI, and that's why that's that way, but whatever. Um, in fact, let's just get rid of that all together. There we go. So now we just have our two guitar bed tracks here, these two, and then our first set of unison parts, and then our, it, during the instrumental section, we have these unison parts. Okay, so if I roll, I have the guitar soloed right now, and if I roll this, uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the distinct lack of low end in these guitars. <laughs> um, another word for that might be bright, but it's I don't know. I'm I I don't really think of them as bright as I just think of them not having a lot of bass information. Sorry, my, my face is suddenly very itchy. Uh, anyway, um, let's hear that again. I bring that up because in the bass breakdown, I talked about how I had high passed the bass at a, at a pretty high frequency. And I speculated that some people might actually have a criticism of that. And that is, that's a valid criticism, taking a bunch of bass out of the bass guitars. Kind of on the surface seems like a really dumb idea. But in contrast with, and, you know, and, and in some cases that would be true, you know. Uh, and in this case, maybe, but not in my opinion. So if I turn the bass on with the guitars, you can hear how much the bass is actually doing. So 
So once again, without the bass. The other reason I bring this up is because if you go out and find isolated guitar tracks of bands that have a really heavy guitar tone, uh, you might be surprised to discover how much low end is not in the really heavy guitars. It's a lot of times the bass is 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 really bringing up the rear on that. So uh, I'm not really, you know, these videos aren't tutorials. I'm just kind of trying to point out things that I've discovered while learning about this stuff. So if that's useful to you, hopefully that's a good thing. All right, so let's get into these guitars. So the first thing is this intro. <laughs> And in the track. Okay, so the astute of you will notice that I completely ripped off Rancid um, with that intro. I didn't rip off a song directly, but... I totally ripped off their idea, but it's okay because I think they ripped it off from the specials. Maybe not. Either way, uh, uh, really, 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 really glad that the that the Rancid Boys are still out there doing it. Those guys are, are great songwriters. Anyway, uh, so after my Rancid ripoff intro, we go into the verse. <laughs> So there's some palm muted stuff in there. And if it if these guitars weren't so lacking in low end, I might use a, you know, which may be applicable in a different song. Uh if the guitars had more low end, I might use a uh uh like a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor to um, take the woof out of the, the palm mutes, but I didn't do that. And, and, and I do that a lot. You know, I do it a lot in repo man music. In this case, uh, there's not a need because there's so little low end in the guitars. So that's the first thing. <laughs> And then we come to the first unison part, which are these um, these octaves. And that's not actually a triadal or even a five chord. That's just two strings played at the same time. Two notes, an octave apart, played on two different strings. And in the track, that sounds like this. Moving right along. We get to this instrumental section. You know, that might make more sense if I play it with the rest of the music first. And then we break it down. So this instrumental section um, in the original song by uh, Johnny Nash, uh, this instrumental section has a really weird chord progression, and uh, it took me a pretty good while to figure it out. And um, then to add insult to injury, we we're playing the song in a different key, so I had to transpose it. But uh, what it is, is it's G sharp minor, D, G sharp minor, D, G, F sharp minor, and E, and it goes like this. I can see so what's happening there is the bed is playing the chords and I'm going to solo these two lanes so you can hear what the bed is doing. (laughs) 
So those are playing a low part. And then the next bit, these two unison parts are playing octaves. I'm wrong, excuse me, they're playing different chord voicings. And then these guys, these blue ones are octaves. Whoops. Sorry, everybody. Here we go. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you get the idea with that. The whole thing together sounds like this. And then again in the track. Okay. So some of you may be right now wondering, well, wait a minute. We haven't talked about the guitar. We haven't talked about amps. We haven't talked about any of that stuff. And I, and I'm doing that on purpose because again, this is not a tutorial. I, I really would like to get away from the idea that, that these videos I make are, are tutorials. They're not. I'm just trying to show you our approach to things. But something that I discovered when I was younger, like especially in my 20s, I used to just think that, you know, gear and equipment and production value, I know gear and equipment are the same thing. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm kind of making this up as I go along. No script. Anyway, um, I used to think that gear and production value were the only thing. But I want to stress that whenever we're putting one of these songs together, you know, we're doing it from a perspective of, of making a, a good musical idea, right? No guitar amplifier or pedal or guitar or, or anything like that is going to be of any use at all if the music that is being played through it or with it is not good, right? At least you know, we have to think it's good. So that's why I really wanted to stress the music part of this first. So I appreciate you being patient with me. And now we'll get into the gear. So to my left here, um, my left, I have the guitar that I used. It is a one of the old... You'll have to forgive my lights are kind of reflecting in this thing, but it's an older uh, Korean-made Paul Reed Smith SE Custom 22, and it has Sir Thornbucker pickups in it. And this is kind of the Daily Driver studio guitar around here. Uh, I have, I don't know, 19 or 20 other ones here in the studio, too. But this is the one that gets used most of the time, at least when I'm just putting down ideas. So there's that. And again, it's a custom 22. It only has 22 frets, which is my preference. Um, normally when I'm recording rock guitars, I also have an Ibanez RG that I use. Um, and I, and I'll do one, I'll do the Paul Reed on the left and the RG on the right. Cause RG starts with R and right starts with right or right starts with R and that that's, that's how I keep it straight in my head. In this case, uh, I think we've said, and I think I may have said in the bass breakdown, you know, we did this for a contest and we only had nine days. So I just demoed the guitars as fast as I could, and I did it with that guitar I just showed you. And then Adrian bowed out. He said he wasn't into um, working on it. He just, he, he just, I don't know, he wasn't feeling the song or he wasn't coming up with any ideas or whatever. And that 
you know, and that's and that's fine. Like that wasn't. I I don't bring that up because I'm trying to throw shade at Adrian. Um, he did us a favor because, um, you know, we had such a time crunch. Um, you know, if he wasn't having a really inspired idea, that you know that might add time, and that's that was something that we just did not have. Anyway, um, so when I demoed these guitars. Uh, I did what I always do and what I recommend everybody is I just tried to get the best performance I could get because whenever you're demoing something and you're going to present it to your band, if it doesn't sound good, um, it's going to be really hard for you to sell it to the band. Like say, come on guys, let's do this song. It's going to be really great. If it doesn't sound good, they're not going to believe that, right? So whenever I do a demo, I try to make it as good as possible. And I did that in this case, too. And then Mike just said, okay, well, send me an instrumental version of that, and I'll sing over it. And so he did. And once I had vocals, I'm listening to this, and I'm just like, well, I don't know, this sounds pretty good. So I just kept those guitars, and I never recorded a second guitar. So all of these... All of these audio regions you're seeing, they're all that, that blue Paul Reed Smith. Also, in the interest of time, um, well, let me, preface, let me preface this by saying um, I am really into recording real amps. I have, I don't know, 10 of them. Um, I think 10, last count. 10 or 11. Anyway. Uh, I'm not bragging about that. I'm just old and I never get rid of anything. So anyway, I'm really into recording real amps. But again, in this case, just no time. So I went ahead and used plugins. I recorded directly into my Focusrite ISA, which is actually what I'm speaking into right now. And uh, I recorded these things direct and I used two plugins that are not free. Uh, one is the Amp Knob by Bogren Digital. This is the Amp Knob Rev C. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can you can surmise what this is a model of. I really like these Amp Knob plugins because they just have one knob gain, and um, working with them is really fast. You know, you don't have the option paralysis of presence and treble and bass and mid-range and you know putting it they do actually they may have oh i'm wrong about that i was thinking that maybe they have a I, i'm thinking of a different plugin sorry anyway so you don't you don't have option paralysis with these all you do is you just crank up the gain in this case i'm not cranking up the gain you can see i have it kind of less than 25 percent so that's the left guitars the left left side guitars panned left guitars the panned right guitars are another amp knob plug in and i'm again i'm pretty sure you can recognize what this is a model of it's an old uh amp from the 90s that was made by a company uh that starts with p and uh the first three letters of the number are 515 or the model number <laughs> Anyway, um, again, just one knob. And this one has um, a boost that you can turn on and off. And I did use the boost. And that boost, by the way, I'm pretty sure is a model of a green, a particular green pedal uh, that was made by Ibanez. Still is made by Ibanez, by the way. Anyway, um those together I'm just going to play the guitar bed now uh. so yeah uh, the the Borgen amp knob pedals are absolutely not free and I'm not encouraging you to buy them there's a bunch of great free um plugins out there in fact the one that comes to mind um is by uh 
or, or I should say a really good one that comes to mind is from uh, ML Sound. And it's the Amped Roots. Okay, so the, this is a collection of amps, and they're not all free. But the um, the one um, that you're looking at now, I believe, is the free one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, these are models. Uh, if you're watching guitar or YouTube stuff, I know you know who Fluff is. Ryan Bruce is his, is his name. Um, and th this is a model of his actual amp. So you can go out and get that for free. And then to upgrade to the full package, just it's not terribly expensive. It's, I don't know. When I upgraded it, it, it was like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. I don't know if that's changed, but whatever. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, there's lots of great free amp sims. Um, but in this case, I did use not free amp plugins. So, And these aren't terribly expensive, by the way, if you're interested in that. Um, once again, Bogren Digital, and there's no affiliate links or anything. It's just throwing it out there. B O G R E N. Uh, those go into this bus where there's an EQ, and you guessed it. I'm boosting. Oh, this time I'm boosting a little lower. I'm boosting at 6K. Or no, that's the DB, excuse me. All right, so I'm, bo I'm boosting at 3K. And I'm boosting at 8K. And uh, I'm wondering now if on the other breakdowns I was looking at the wrong knobs. Whoops. Um, okay, so you may need to take my EQ settings from the previous breakdowns with a grain of salt. Anyway, um, and then that goes into an LA-2A compressor. Again, not free. Um, I'm using this just to make the guitars wider. I can see all obstacles in my so if I solo this again, and I turn this on and off. Once again, if the check mark is off, it's off. And if the check mark is on, it's on. You'll hear that the guitars get a little wider. So, so I'm gonna start with it off. So I'm hearing that here in the studio. That might be hard on the um, on the YouTube video, unless you're listening on headphones or whatever. But anyway, that's why I'm doing that. Uh, the astute among you will say, why are you compressing distorted guitars? Distorted guitars are already compressed to death because of the distortion, and you're correct. Again, I said the astute of you. Um, and to directly answer that question, I'm just doing it to get a little more width. What I'm doing is compressing the center, basically. Uh, I'm not using a mid-side trickery thing, but just throwing a compressor on it makes it a little wider, um, at least in my experience. And then um, it's basically the same thing on the, um, the other unison parts here. All right, so in review, um, good musical ideas, at least in our opinion, fake amps, some EQ, and some compression to make them a little wider. Um, the guitar is a thing, but I, I think you could do this with pretty much any nice sounding guitar. Doesn't have to be this one. Um, and with that, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. I really appreciate you hanging around. And, uh, if I'm right and I told you wrong about the, uh, the EQ settings and the other breakdowns, well, I apologize, but, um, that's going to be it for me before I go. Uh, if you wouldn't mind looking to my left. 
and doing some or all of that. Um, if you haven't done it already, uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the drum breakdown.